Welcome to a confidence interval example using the T distribution. So our example uh, study was run to estimate the average hours of work a week of California Community College students. A random sample of 100 students was found to average 18.7 hours of work a week with a standard deviation of 12.3 hours. Find the 95% confidence interval. So here's essentially what we're trying to do. So this is an estimation problem. So this is going to be confidence interval. We also have it right here. So we know that we are doing a confidence interval. We are working with average. So we're talking about the mean and we just have our one population of California Community College students. So we are doing a one mean interval. Um, from here, looking through all of the information we have, we have our random sample of 100 students. And that sample was found to average 18.7 hours. And the sample had a standard deviation of 12.3 hours. So this entire sentence, we're talking about the sample, that standard deviation is the sample standard deviation. So we have our random sample. Drawn from the entire population. We have n is 100. Our sample average x bar is 18.7. And our sample standard deviation is 12.3. So again, major thing to note, this is our sample standard deviation. This means that we should not be working with the Z distribution, we will be working with the T distribution. So we're looking at the T distribution. And uh, we're doing 95% confidence. Okay. All of this information is relevant. Uh, the main difference from this and the example we did previously is just that we will be doing the T distribution since we only know the sample standard deviation. So here we need to justify the study was well run. Um, we already did this random and drawn from the entire population. Sounds like I need to pause and come back. And continuing on, we have our justification. So we have that we have our random sample. We have our good sampling technique. It was random and drawn from the entire population. Then we have our normality of the X bar distribution. And um, in this case, the normality of the X bar distribution, we have our large sample, so that does the trick. So this is 30 or larger. So we meet our conditions. Uh, so giving myself a little more space. Uh, we can run uh, the confidence interval.
because we used a good sampling technique. And the conditions for normality of the X bar distribution were met. And we will use the T distribution because we only know the sample standard deviation. So from here, we have our shape, center, and spread for understanding the sampling distribution. So for shape, we have that it's normal. Again, we did that in step two. For center, mu sub x bar is equal to mu. This is what we are trying to estimate. Then we have spread. We would like to use sigma sub x bar equals sigma divided by the square root of n. Unfortunately, we do not know uh, sigma. So we will approximate with our sample standard deviation s. So the symbol I use is not an official symbol. I just use S sub X bar just to indicate that we are using S instead. We'll do S divided by the square root of N. So our S was 12.3, N was 100. So we have 12.3 divided by the square root of 100 or uh, 1.23. So this is our sort of approximate standard error. It's not precise. Next, we have to find our interval. So our point estimate, we start off with a mean, which is our X bar. So X bar was 18.7. So for our sample, we have X bar was 18.7. For our margin of error, uh, if we know sigma sub X bar, we use Z sub C, but we now use T sub C since we're working with S. So we'll do T sub C times S sub X bar. Again, we're working with the T distribution. Uh, since we only have our sample standard deviation. So we need to figure out our T sub C. So to find T sub C, We have our degrees of freedom, our, our sample size minus one. So 100 minus one, or 99. 
we need to have our central probability. We're doing 95% confidence, so we use 0 0.95. If we go over to our inverse T distribution calculator, we have 0 0.95 as our central probability. And then we are looking at 99 for our sample size. And so that gives us a T-score of 1.9842. Um, I'm just going to add this picture into our uh, notes. So here is the uh, image we are working with. So this is our uh, T sub C is 1.9842. So that means that our margin of error, we are looking at 1.9842 times our S sub X bar. S sub X bar was 1.23. And doing that multiplication, we went, uh, we get approximately uh, 2.44 for our margin of error. Uh, from here, we do our interval. So we take our point estimate, our X bar, we go up by our margin of error, down by our margin of error. So in this case, our point estimate was 18.7. We are going up by 2.44 and down by 2.44. Um, so that gives us on the right side, 21.14. And on the left, we would be looking at 16.26 for our interval. So we have 16.26 to 21.14 hours. And we are trying to estimate the average hours of work a week for California Community College students. So we have our generic sentence, oops. I am 95% confident that the average hours of work a week for California Community College students falls between 16.26 and 21.14 hours. Um, just a side note, this sample is completely made up. The sample data is completely made up. This is not at all based off of an actual study. I do not know um, what the actual average would be. But this is the general idea for doing a confidence interval. Again, really the only difference is that because we only know the sample standard deviation, uh, we are working with a T distribution. So we needed to figure out our degrees of freedom and then use our T distribution calculator 
to find the corresponding T sub C. Uh, other than that, it's basically exactly the same as we were doing previously.